sponsored by Women Technology. Take advantage of our end of summer promotion, offering a $30 off bundle discount on the whole test takeout panel controls through September 2021. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. We're continuing our naval battle series. This is all your suggestions and all the ones that we've done and haven't done. This week we're looking at India and everything Indian and of course what we're going to do today is the IAF the Indian Air Force attacking a Chinese carry group so first things to say is that in real life Indians do have carry groups and we wanted to simulate it but when we started to look into the details about which type of carriers and carrier escorts they use we just could not simulate it we couldn't really get even anywhere near and so we thought rather than just being super stupidly unrealistic, we would just change it and just use the Indian Air Force. The role play today is thus. Chinese slash Pakistani carrier group is blockading Mumbai on the west coast of India. Today, Mumbai will be that area there. The Chinese Pakistan carrier group is currently 250 nautical miles, about 280, nearly 300 miles away from Mumbai, and they're going to get to within 100 miles. They're going to set up their economic blockade. India is not happy with this, and they're obviously going to retaliate. Let's go through today's unit so we know what's going on. The beating heart of the Indian Air Force is the Su-30 MKI. That's the export version of the Su-30, an Indian version. There are 270 or so active in the Indian Air Force. In terms of their anti-ship ability, it's built around something called the BrahMos missile, the absolutely giant thumping unit you can see between the nacelles of this Su-30. This is how India would take on any kind of naval assets in real life. So we've got 20 Su-30 MKIs, each with a giant BrahMos anti-ship missile. Bramis anti-ship missile, I believe, is a joint Indo-Russian venture based on the P-800 Russian anti-ship supersonic missile. It's a two-stage missile, so you've got a rocket booster at the back, which uh, gets it up to uh, supersonic speed. And then you've got a liquid-fueled ramjet to keep it supersonic up to Mach 3 until it hits the target with a 400-plus pound warhead. As well as BrahMos, it's got four times Astra air-to-air -air missiles. These are Fox 3 medium-range missiles and a pair of arches on the wingtips. We don't want any more because we want to keep these as slippery and as fast as possible. BrahMos is a very big, heavy, draggy missile and we don't want to slow this plane down. 20 of them, they are starting at 200 feet for radar still for reasons. They are going to climb and move at mill power towards the hostile fleet. They're going to split up around a 30 degree uh, segment and then try and time on target, fire their missiles to the hostiles. Time on target is very important when firing anti-ship missiles because saturation of the missile is what is going to be the carrier group. That is the Su-30s. Next, for the air-to-air -air escort, we've tried to take a sample of most of the modern Indian Air Force. So here we have eight Rafals on the wingtips. We've got some classic old Magic 2s. Then we've got Mica NGs, radar-guided Mica missiles. Then we've got the mighty long-range Meteors, three of them. And then we've got two times Mica IRs, uh, IR-guided Mica missiles. Now, this brings on a bit of a predicament. The other carrier series is that you've seen, we do not allow long-range missiles. That's because it creates an unfair fight, usually because only one of the sides is modelled with long-range missiles. So, for instance, it would be unfair if one side got long-range missiles and the others didn't. But if they both have long-range missiles modelled, like we do in, in this scenario here, then I will allow long-range missiles. So, these guys have got the meteors, and we'll look at the Chinese in a bit. Now, that is a massive game changer, by the way. Long range missiles are very different to medium range missiles in their capabilities and will destroy anything with medium range missiles, as you'll almost certainly see today. So, that is the Rafales. They're starting at 200 feet for stealth reasons as well. They're going to climb up to optimum fighting altitude very fast 600, 600 knots. They're going to be going probably after burn it. Next, we've 
got the, <laughs> I don't want to say the kamikaze. I tried to use the MiG-21s for these because the Indians do have MiG-21s, but they're just not fast enough to partake in this. They, they get outrun even by the SU-30s on mill power. So MiG-21s are just not good enough. They've been replaced by the MiG-29 in real life. Uh, we have the MiG-29K and you KG or UG something or other. Anyway, I don't have the particular version India has. I've done the best I can with the S model, which is very similar. We've got uh, four times MiG 29S in this case with R 77 adders and archers and a fuel tank. These guys are going to do what the MiG 29 does best, and that is to just charge forward as fast as possible. Massively fast kinematic fighters these are and to just basically sacrifice themselves because of what's coming against them and try and get the uh, allow the Brahmoses to be fired. Brahmos missile has, by the way, a firing range of about 200 nautical miles in real life from air. In DCS, it's about half of that, for reasons I don't know. Uh, UPG, it's the MiG-29 UPG, thank you guys. So the Brahmos in DCS needs to get within 100 miles, hence I'm having to do all this to try and get those Brahmosaurs within firing range. So these guys are going to charge in, sacrifice themselves. Everything's set to ace skill level as requested by you guys. Next, we've got uh, more Rafales. Uh, we've got the Mirages. We have Mirage Hs, which are very similar to Dash 5s. Uh, so Dash 5s will have to do. These Mirages have on the outside just Magic 2s uh, for dogfights. We've got Mica RF, so that is radar guided micas, and then IR guided micas, and then a fuel tank. Exactly the same thing, charging as fast as they can and uh, try and take the heat off of the Bramos firers. And finally, we always have to have our human counterparts because GR is all about human interaction. It's what sets us apart from everyone else. So we've got Simba here. Say hello, Simba. Hello. He's in a respawning Rafale. Don't worry too much about that because he'll probably only have maximum two lives because this is going to be a quick one. I imagine, as Brahmos is uh, uh, not going to mess around. He's American on loan to India. He's got his fancy dragon skin. He is a Rafale M, four meteors, uh, two magics, two mica IRs, one mica NG. So it's a very Rafale SU-30 fight. We've seen nothing like it before. Never really seen a, an Air Force like this before. It's a really interesting mix of French and Russian vehicles. So it's going to be super cool. Very simply, the SU-30s are going to go in, they're going to split around their segment, they're going to fire their Brahmoses, and then they're just going to... Uh, well, at that point, I have not managed to code them to do anything, uh, so they're just going to sit around and probably die. But once their Brahmoses are out, that's all we really care about with the SU-30s. All the air-to-air fighters are going to charge in, more or less, on afterburner, and just take the heat off the Brahmos virus. That's it. No one is programmed to RTB. This is a one-way mission for the Indians, I suspect, and I suspect they know it. At a distance of... 200 nautical miles because that's what we've calculated to be the AWACS detection distance at the altitudes in question and you can see there are about 200 nautical miles uh, we've got the Chinese Pakistan fleet why is Pakistan helping it's just the only way I could factor in the Pakistan Navy in any way Pakistan do not have carrier groups but they do have uh, naval assets that we actually have in game which is pretty cool so the first major change I should say today is that today the Chinese will not attack until the AWACS actually spots these hostiles here. So in terms of realism, when they would actually see the Blue Hordes, it's all done by DCS now. When this guy, the AWACS, the KJ-2000 at ace level at 26,000 feet, actually sees those guys with line of sight, then he will issue orders to these guys to attack. So the beating heart of the fleet is going to be the Chinese carry, of course, the Liang. On the Liang is going to be 24 J-15 Bravos. These are, of course, the kind of Chinese copies of the SU-33. Some people are saying they don't have very powerful engines. I don't know anything about that, so I'm not going to pretend to know. They are armed with four archers for us. Uh, archers. PL-10s, probably the best hob in the game from what we've tested. Then four PL-12s, SD-10s, FOX-3 medium-range missiles, probably, I don't want to bias it towards the Chinese, but from what we've seen, probably the best FOX-3 in the game. In terms of real life, I don't know, you know, don't ask me, but in the game. Now here's the game changer. We've got four PL-15s. Just looks like a little number, right? These are absolute, these give me chills down my spine every time I see these. These, at least in DCS, are just the biggest, nastiest, Long-range air to MSLs you'll ever see. They're horrible. They're horrible to dodge. They're fast. Their radar is excellent. They're Fox 3 capable. It's this thing here. It looks just like a normal missile, really. 
they really are game changers. I don't usually allow them because they're just so good. But in this in this case, we've got meteors to offset them. So I'm going to allow them. But expect PL-15s to rain down upon those Indians. And it's going to be horrendous. As soon as they get orders, they will scramble and head off uh, to these guys. Here, uh, they're just going to fan out in you know a rough guess of where the baddies are and just fight to the death. Some complaints that aircraft are not RT being to carriers and rearming. Um, I had a go and it didn't work. And I've investigated further. It is currently not working in game. In game, AI can rearm at bases and go up again. Land bases, they cannot do it on carriers. It's not working. We will put it in the bug list and try and get it fixed for later in the year. There are also two airborne, making a total of 24. 24. So, sorry if I got that wrong, but that's 22 there. 22 there. Two here, airborne and orbiting with all the same loadout, making 24 total, 24 total, which is the maximum you can carry on the Liang. Escort ships are as the same we always use for the Chinese carrier. 54A at the front, 52Cs at the side, 52Bs at the back. We don't have 55s, we don't have 54s, we don't have 53s in game, but these are pretty damn capable and uh, we'll be fine. They're in typical Chinese defensive formation. And Pakistanis, they've got. Helping, uh, one time Oliver Hazard Perry, they do actually have Oliver Hazard Perry at least one in Pakistan operational at the moment, so it's going to join in. They also have modifications of the Zero Type 53 Chinese warship. Uh, this is called the Zolfigua class F-22P sword uh, class, at least two, possibly more. In real life, we've not got the 53s, we've got the 52s which aren't dissimilar, so I'm replacing them with uh, 052 cs and that is, these are the trio of Pakistanis in today. Uh, in terms of what the Brahmuses are going to fire at, I've not ordered them to fire anything. They will fire at what they think, the, the AI thinks they should fire at. The fleet is moving at 30 knots towards Mumbai. In terms of realism, I would say this is pretty realistic. I mean, ignore the role play. A carrier group would sail pretty much more or less like this. Maybe a little bit more spread, but I think that will keep everyone happy. Uh, they would go towards Mumbai, simple as that, so that they could become operational and uh, do their blockade or whatever. The Indians would probably do a mass time on target strike across a broad front like we've got here. They probably would use the aircraft. Uh, would they use more? Would they use less? I don't know. That's up for you guys to argue, I suppose. But this is what they're going to use in this case. So the ranges are all realistic. The detection ranges are all realistic. Simba, if you've been listening, you've got a Chinese-Pakistan fleet. And you've got a Indian Air Force made up of Russian and French fighters and fighter bombers. And you're flying for India today. Your predictions, please. A lot of long-range missiles. A lot of carnage. I should say one more thing, valued viewers. The Brahmos, uh, we've spoken to the makers of them. Uh, Codename Flanker. We'll have the Discord link in the Roger. video description. They made the SU-30 mod, uh, the Brahmos missile and the Astra missile. They are saying currently, I haven't tried this yet because I, I like to be surprised as much as you guys. The Brahmos missile is currently underperforming, they say, and later in the year they are going to modify it. But for the time being, it is how it is. I look forward to seeing it. Stand by for the fight. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Server's not crashed. So we've got a fight, Valley viewers. They are at 200 plus nautical miles at the moment, moving at various speeds. We've got some time before any action happens. So let's go and have a look at the fleet, first of all. J-15s on the Liang. They're going to be taking off, but they're not going to be engaging yet because I had a quick test. They won't engage until the Blues are about 180 nautical miles. Otherwise, spacing of vessels around four five to six miles in either direction let's have a look at the pakistanis today old oliver has a perry and the new sword classes let's have a look at the airborne j15 you can see they're not aggressing at the moment because the awax has not spotted simba and co yet oh i take that back i think i've seen you that was a quick detection got the kj2000 let's go and have a look at the indians leading the way are the uber powerful mig-29s Listen to those motors, Valley viewers. I had to put them in uh, Iranian flags today. It's all I could get them in. Heading with their, uh, their adders and archers. Like I said, they're just tasked with going flat out and just beating everyone, basically. Rafale by Simba in his uh, loaned aircraft from GR. Please don't waste the airframe. Supersonic. Powerful uh, aircraft. SU-30s with their Brahmoses. Deliberately holding back at mill power because they don't want to be the first ones there, valued viewers. It's important these guys arrive last, but in time, to launch their Brahmoses. 
Uh, what else have we got? We've got the AI Rafales in the Indian colours. Climbing. Uh, we've got the Mirage 2000 H's. Supersonic already. Fast. Value viewers asking if they've got a mod for the Tejas yet. They do not. We do not have a mod. And that's it. That's the fight, guys. Uh, I stand corrected. They have not been spotted yet. And they are at 185 miles. They will be spotted soon. I can assure you of that. At some point, these guys will light the reheats and go. Again, line of sight, all automatically calculated from the KJ2000. Signal strength, all that stuff is calculated. Stealth, to with a degree anyway. Now, amazingly, RC, uh, Simba is leading the challenge. Uh, wow, a thousand knots you've got that thing to. You've got that thing to a thousand knots with a full loadout. Pretty sure it can't do that, but I guess we'll let them off. Marines. And what altitude has he got? It's got to 47,000 feet. That's, no, that's too fast. Silly. And are they reheat? Yep, they've seen them. They've seen you, Simba. Burners on. Off go the J-15s. This worries me a lot because these PR-15s, I know how good they are. In-game, I must stress, in-game. I've never fired one in real life. 133 miles and the closure rate is Mach 4 or something ridiculous now. You can see how the calculation of the TOT is working well. The SU-30s are more or less in line, plus or minus maybe 10 seconds, uh, which is, you know, it's realistic to have a, a bit of an error like that. All back here. The MiG-29 is going as fast as they can, pretty much. Accelerating. Well, actually, deaccelerating. I don't know why, but I don't know. Uh, and the Rafales are ahead here. So it's important these guys suck up all the missiles so the SU-30s can get through. Distances between fronts of... 120 miles. Now, in real life, they could actually fire these missiles they've got at these ranges, but I've just realised I've not added a blue AWACS. Oh, wow. In real life, the India would obviously come with their AEW, and I've just realised I made an error. That's going to be a massive deficit for the Blues. It means the Blues have to use their own radars, which I know sounds easy, but, you know, if I plonked you in there and told you to go and fight all these guys with their jammers on and stuff like that, it's almost impossible. So it's a massive deficit for these guys not to have the AOX, and I apologise. Um, I always seem to miss something. Let's see how they do. Let's see how they do. Um, now, I was going to say, these, we've got super long-range missiles in DCS. For instance, the PL-15, we've got the Meteor, but we don't have the, we don't have the ability to fire them on data link. In real life, you could fire this missile and on data link and fire it all the way over there okay 160 or something miles i measured can't do that in dcs it's not supported yet um so you have to fire it fire it via your own radar now your own radar can only see 40 50 maybe 60 miles at best uh, against a, a small target like this so the maximum range you're going to get in optimal firing conditions well we'll see in a minute maybe 50 miles or something like that so they're not as nasty as they are in real life with data link but they're still very nasty compared to a medium range missile like an amram c or something like that as you'll soon see especially if they work the way they work in dcs they don't have ramjets in dcs instead in dcs they just pump the speed up like two or three fold and that's why they become so deadly mr simba is uh 78 miles if i were you i'd pop a freaking mic have you got them on radar lock here i guess not Nope, nothing yet. Let's go and have a look at the Chinese. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight so far. Whoops. The remainder are on the deck or down in the belly of the ship. Oh, the first PL-15s are out, Simba, at 65 miles. So the absolute maximum range of the radar of the J-15 uh, against this side target, 65 miles. He's fired. It's, he's cranking left low. He's going to support that missile with his own radar until it goes active. Let's go and have a look at that missile now. Look at the speed that it can achieve. Look how high it's going. 90,000 feet, 100,000 feet, 2,000 knots. Over 100,000 feet. I know it's not new space, but I consider that old space. Going up to 110,000 feet. It's flying at a very weird negative angle of attack, which is obviously not realistic, but, you know, it's the best they can do. In DCS at the moment, 110,000 feet plus, 1,500 knots, and these things are going to fly right around the world. We've got a uh, defensive crank from Simba. Now, we're about to see why those PL-15s are so incredibly dangerous. They will just drop down on him from space. And they'll have so much, so much kinematic energy that there's very little Simba can do, unless he's going at Mach 3, to be able to evade them. Let's have another look. Okay, it's diving down on him. It's 90,000 feet. Look at the speed and it's increasing speed, which is almost certainly 
Well, I don't know. I don't know mass I don't know much about these missiles in real life, but it's tracking him, it's turned his own radar on now. You can see it's guiding towards him with his own radar. Oh there it is, Simba. Simba's putting flare chaff out, but there's very little because look how fast it's going. Fifteen hundred knots. Now what's that up there? That's I don't know, it's it's numerous Mac, Mac two, Mac three or something. He's doing a defensive notch to his right and diving. Probably might beat it, I don't know. Better get the uh, SA, rest of the SA. Oh, look at that thing, hound him down. Oh, bless his cotton socks, guys. He's defeated it. He's defeated it. He defeated it at PL12. And that shows how early, I mean, he defeated that by 100 feet. That shows how early you've got to dodge these things. It's horrendous. Right, Simba's friends are coming in now. All these PL15s going out. Sitting on TWS, just pow powing the PW, uh, PW15s. A massive advantage. Now, here's a big question. Why are the Rafals not firing their meteors? The Rafals should be able to fire their meteors at 40, 50, 60 miles, and they're not. And I definitely equip them, question mark. Yep, they're just not doing it. And I'd have to have a word with Mr. Cuesta. Right, Simba, I'm afraid you've run out of luck, and you've run out of airspace. You're going to have to accept your fate. Boom, PR15. And it doesn't have a damage model. Excellent news. Uh, that Rafale, yo. Right. How about the AI ones? Do they work? Yep. They work. Oh, a meteor! There's a meteor out! God, it's good to see a meteor out. Well done, Simba. Solid jet and then ram jet. The speed of that thing! We've got a, we've got a J-15 down. Well done. And I've got a merge. Shoot him quickly, Simba, because you're going about to die. Missile out. Don't know what it was, but it was a thing. Oh, and he's dead. Oh, and the missile went dumb. It was a meteor, and it went dumb. Oh, God, this is going to be ugly for the blues. No Bramoses out. Got to keep an eye for the Bramoses. Look at them try and notch. It's just almost impossible to beat a PL-15. Once it's after you, you've got to dodge... 10 miles away. Uh oh. Here's a thing. Oh, we'll cut that one out of the video. Oh, it was a Bramos. It was a Bramos. Uh, it was problematic at best. Here come the Mica NGs. But against the PL15, the Bramoses are out. The Bramoses are out. Yeah, Bramos, baby. Here they go. Turning their way up to 3,000 knots. Sorry, Mac 3, whatever that's going to be. And hits PL15. It's just rained down upon the uh, Indians. And a massive sector of the blues already destroyed. Okay, they've finally run out of J-15s, look, and the PL-12s. The ST-10s are coming out. More Bramos is coming out. This guy just took a PL-15. This guy's about to take a PL-15. Everyone stop saying PL-15. 176,000 feet! It's gone around the world and it's still going up. That will never come down. That's going out of orbit. Papa Lima 1-5. Roger, Roger, Papa Lima 1-5. Ah, uh, you should not say the other one, so... So, must have been... Okay. There's a little bit too much to look at for my liking. SC-10's coming in, a bit more traditional, medium range, Fox 3 missile. Not sure what that's going after. Mirages are finally in. Where were the Mirages? All that. Well, everyone was dying. SU-30s have done their job. They're expendable now. They can just suck up missiles. They really are sucking up missiles. They're built of Stralinium, valued viewers. That makes them a bit extra absorbent of 70-pound warheads. Okay, they're finally running away. Like they should have been doing as soon as they put those Bramoses out, to be honest. Chapping. Nothing's going to fall in SC-10, baby. Oh, that's painful. He can't do anything. Why didn't you beat your burners on? Because I didn't program him to. God, they're strong. They will not die. Mods, man. Mods. Finally, someone's going to shoot J-15 down. We've got a mica uh, radar out. Wow, this SC-30 has gone rogue and he's gone air-to-air. Mica's missed. Look at this guy. He'd be like, I don't care if I'm anti-ship only. I'm going to shoot you down. Or maybe not. Oh, oh, just took a hop in the face. I swear these guys are invincible. It's SU-30s. Like they haven't even got damage on them. What's going on, Nerdin? 
Merge. Tried to bend a hop around. And he did. Boom. No damage. Boom. Man, they suck up a lot of missiles. Man, they suck up a lot of missiles. Right. I've got this horrible feeling the SU-30s don't actually have a damage model. I haven't seen a single one be shot down yet. I've seen about 20 be hit by missiles. Just saying. I've oh got a whole new flight of PL-15s coming in from these guys. Oh, the Brambleses! I completely forgot about the Brambleses! Oh, no! We're going to have to go and watch Attack View. I don't see any obviously damaged ships. I apologise for that, Valley Viewers. I got distracted. Oh, I think they got shot down, you know. Oh, how sad. I really didn't expect that. They're at the right nope, speed. There's one about to hit the ships right now. Watching. Ramos in the face! Oh, come on! Look at that! Unbelievable. They... Ah, oh, that's crazy, man. They were going the right speed. I clocked them about Mach 2, 2.7 with my arithmetic. But the problem is, they were flying at the wrong altitude. I'm pretty sure they were flying at the wrong altitude. We'll go through it and tack view afterwards, valued viewers. Uh, we might as well watch the rest of this fight for the lols and the gaggle. Are you still airborne, Simba? Yep. Mirage H about to bite the bullet. Thump. They've got damage. <laughs> I'm just watching the SU-30s. Can't get killed. No, they've got their damage model. They've got their damage model. That was a bit silly. Look at this guy get. Look at this bend. Look at this bend after him. Look at it bend. Look at it go for him. And not. Or maybe not. No, still going after him. And C. Splash. So funny. Right, we've only got one more plane with a damage model here, and then we're going to quit it. Yeah, none of the SU-30s took damage. Look at this, chase him. I'm 1,000 knots, and that's faster than you, Mr. Mirage. Where'd he go? There he is. Where is he? There he is. We can dive away from the PL-15s. It's like a shark, it just never gives up. It never ever gives up. Until that happens. Amazing driving from the uh, 2000 H's. Simba's coming. Where are you, Simba? I hear finally Simba's coming back in. He spawns 200 miles away, so. Last dog fight Mirage H versus J15, yo. Get him, sir. No, he hasn't seen him. Oh, but oh, oh, oh. A hobs out, that's a PL10. They are dangerous missiles, as we found in our dogfight series. Boom! Don's the visage. Go and get your meteors out, Simba. At a heading of 255 for 34. Hot. High. Oh, actually, half your altitude. Yep, I'm, I'm getting jammed right now. Oh, 60,000 feet. Yeah, jammers be annoying and ting. So, a lot of you valid viewers are saying the AI is stupid, they get shot down by ships and stuff like that. Replace them with human pilots, you'll get exactly the same. It's not as easy as looking on a big map like this when you're flying. You don't know really who's shooting at you. There are so many electrical signals going out, radar signals, you've got no idea who's shooting at you, when they're shooting at you, if they're even shooting at you or a guy next to you. I guarantee you can put the best naval pilots in here, they're going to get shot down by the ships just like the AI do. If the AI was programmed to be all-knowing, like we are here as God, they wouldn't get shot down by the ships. But uh, when you get signal overload, it's just impossible to know what to do. You've got a missile coming towards you, Simba. There's not a lot you can do. They can see you way before you can see them. Yeah, yeah, situational overload. It's just impossible to navigate a situation like that. Right, Simba's out. Well tried, Simba. Well tried. You did take a couple down, which is good. But it was an, that was an impossible battle. Uh, right, let's diagnose this. Air-to-air -air battle, just overwhelmed by PL-15s. The Meteors didn't work. Yours did, but the AIs didn't work. So Kester needs to go and sort that out. And therefore, it was basically the Reds had long-range missiles, the Blues didn't, and that was only going to end one way. Uh, the SU-30s didn't have, just didn't die. I mean, they've all died now, but it's only because they've run out of fuel. Um, so we need to uh, get on to our guys to get that fixed, obviously. But uh, the Bramoses, the Mirages all worked uh, as required. The Bramoses fired, but didn't 
just get they just got destroyed. We need to go and find out why, Simba. I'm just going to quickly check value viewers just to make sure I didn't set them invincible for my own sanity. Restrict Jetson on. No, I didn't make anything invincible, so that is checking. Right. Uh, okay, let's go and look at the t -t 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 attack view. Here is our massive uh, evil concoction. Okay, first missiles out were out of interest. 54 miles. I mean, that's a lot. The bear in mind, he's using his own range, his own radar. That is a long shot, very long shot. And that will still be doing 1,500 knots by the time he gets there. So it's quite incredible, really. Right, let's see when the Brahmuses were shot at. Because at the end of the day, we're all learning here. Especially me. You used to try and dodge this PL-15. You dodged three. Brahmuses were out at. Brahmuses were out at 73 miles. Wow, okay. It's not as far as I thought. I guess that's because the altitude... What altitude are they at? Uh, 11,000 feet. Kind of medium altitude. That's what they decided for themselves. Fine. Anyway, uh, Brahmuses get through. Massive... War oh, HQ-9s come out, which are the equivalent of the naval, naval grumbles. Thrust vectored. Uh, telegraph poles. And they... Wow, look how many had to come out to take those Brahmuses down. There was only 40 Brahmuses. Well... Uh, sorry, only 20, and probably 20 didn't even get fired. In fact, that's how many got fired, because, you know, reasons. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Of the 20 possible, 14 got fired. The others were engaged by PL-15s or, you know, delayed for some reason. And look how many telegraph poles had to come out to kill them. The speed of them is um, Mach 2.7. Oh, look at my guess. That's spot on, isn't it? Uh, and they're at um, 4,000 feet. And look, they just get bombed. They just get, they just get nuked by Ape telegraphs. Look, one almost gets through, but no. And the reason for that is, is the altitude. Um, the way you get through a ship defence network is you either overwhelm, so that just means hundreds of missiles, or you do it kinematically via going either very low, or very low and very fast is even better. But very fast on its own is not good enough. So these guys are Mach 2.7. You're not going to get a missile going much faster until you get to the hypersonic sets. But there are 3,000 feet. That makes them a lovely easy target. It means they're highlighted against a lovely open, or apart from these guys, a more or less open sky. Very easy to shoot something down, even if it's going Mach 2.7 with these telegraph poles. They're capable of doing it. Even 60s missiles could, to be honest. And they're just too high. If they were going Mach 2.7 and were low, like the YJ-12s from the Chinese that we've got in-game, by the way, it would be a different story. Intercepting them would be almost impossible. Very hard to shoot something down. And when I'm saying low, it doesn't need to be scraping the waves, but if it could just go 150 feet, I reckon that would probably be realistic and we'll probably get it through. Uh, so we want to obviously see our SU-30 uh, guys do well, maybe have a quick chat about them. So work on the Brahmus, get them a bit more realistic, we think. The Astra looks perfect, as it is, and the damage models just need fixing for the SU-30s. Otherwise, that's pretty top-notch, really. Anything you want to add, Mr. Simba Wimba? Uh, yeah, so the uh, the codename Planker team, the guys that are working on the SU-30, have given me a sneak peek by, uh, under the hood of what they they have in store. And uh, In the next month or two, they should be coming out with an updated version of their SU-30. And if you haven't gone and checked out their Discord, I would go check it out, because they have They've been putting a lot, a lot of hard work in the, the next SU-30 mod to come out. Lovely. I will look forward to checking that out. I'll put the link in the description, of course, and we'll see you guys later.